Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, at least two people have died after Zetas lands into the Gulf Coast. And looking outside with live cam here at home, it's a chilly start to the day, but not quite as cold as it has been over the last couple of days. Hey, good morning. It's Thursday, October 29th. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, 48 degrees out there, so it's definitely still jacket weather, but it was so nice to see that sunshine yesterday. Yeah, what a nice break. And it was still cool, still pleasant, you know, and we weren't, you know, sweating outside, but lovely. Yes, we're hoping to string together some beautiful fall days here as we wrap up the month of October. Mike goes right just standing by with more on that. Are we still oh, yeah. looking fantastic through Halloween? And, and then some. And Election Day. Yeah, and Election Day. Uh, you know, it's interesting. Temperatures uh, a couple of hours ago got down to 46 degrees and then went up a little bit. Sometimes happens out there at the airport. I don't know if a plane turns as exhaust. Anyway, yeah, we dropped down <laughs> a little bit more. And uh, I think we'll continue to drop down a few more degrees uh, before it's all said and done. So we've got 48 in comfort. Uh, same thing here in town. A couple of uh, 50s on the map as well. And uh, wind chill temperatures. Yeah, there's still a little bit of a breeze out there. Now, wind temperatures are at 50 or above all the formulas don't come into play so you got to get down to 49 degrees that's why we're not seeing any difference in temperatures there where there the readings are above uh, 50 but there is yeah a little bit of a wind chill around and it is going to be a breezy day again today it was so nice yesterday and you're in the sun it's like you didn't need a jacket you get in the shade you need a jacket and that's going to be the case again today wind right now is out of the west primarily about 5 10 miles per hour we'll be swinging around more out of a uh, north to northwesterly direction later on today mold is on the low side that's the only allergy showing up and i think we drop down into the uh, kind of mid to lower 40s Clear, chilly this morning, beautiful morning, just great. And then 68 for a high temperature later on today. Yeah, the only downside is the fact that there's not a really a drop of rain to be had in about the next week. But I guess if you can't have rain, might as well have just perfect weather. And that's pretty much the best way to sum it up. Details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Marcus Trujillo. Good morning, sir. Well, good morning, Mike. Good morning, everyone at home. As we take a look at the roadways, uh, still off to a pretty good start right now completely different from yesterday so that's the great news hopefully it'll stay that way for our entire morning commute 21 winding way north and south on lanes no problems at this point and moving over to 410 and cherry ridge you can see travel in both directions of the inner loop no problem and we're checking in on 410 northwest military highway so far all is well mark and stephanie Thank you, Marcus. Now to the damage and destruction on the Gulf Coast. Zeta slamming into Louisiana with New Orleans in the bullseye. Winds topping 100 miles per hour and flooding. And now up to eight inches of rain as the storm barrels towards the Carolinas. We have learned at least two deaths are blamed on the storm, including one in Mississippi. Power outages are now widespread. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has the latest. Overnight, Hurricane Zeta barreling into the Gulf Coast after making landfall in Louisiana as a Category 2 storm. Zeta is now the strongest hurricane to hit the continental U.S. this late in the season in more than a century. Authorities preparing for a storm surge of up to 9 feet in Mississippi and Alabama. Hurricane Zeta has made it to Gulfport. We are in the outside of the eye wall and the winds have gusted above 70 miles per hour. The storm surge should happen at any moment. Overnight, nearly 1 million power outages across the region. In Biloxi, Mississippi, cars bobbing like bath toys in a parking garage at the Golden Nugget Hotel and Casino. In Louisiana, the damage widespread. This batting cage now a mangled mess of twisted metal. Pictures showing three breaches in this levee in Jefferson Parish. Prepare for collision, bro. And this barge breaking loose from its mooring. Man, we are so lucky. The storm turning deadly in New Orleans, where police say one person was electrocuted after touching a live wire. The city was spared from five previous storms that hit Louisiana this season, but this time it took a direct hit. This is not a drill. We've had many of them. It's not a drill. Uh, we do expect directly impacting the city of New Orleans. Uh, there is confidence all around that aspect. Mona Kosar Abdi, ABC News, New York. In New Braunfels, a run from law enforcement ends with a three-car crash. We are told no one was hurt. 
It happened just after six last night. Police say they saw a truck that was reported stolen near Rosa Parks Drive. Officers tried to stop that driver, but they say the driver sped off before crashing into the back of a red Ford Escape and sending it into the middle of an intersection. That Ford was then hit by a blue Dodge Ram. Police there say they did arrest the suspect, identified as 18-year-old Jesus Romero, who was booked into the Comal County Jail. Turning now to the coronavirus pandemic here at home. Another rise in cases in Bear County. Our seven-day average now above 200. Three new deaths were reported and more than 280 new cases. It's a different story when it comes to hospitals. Those numbers continue to go down. 225 COVID patients are in the hospital, 13 fewer than last night's report. Southside ISD reporting that they are struggling to find substitute teachers during the COVID-19 pandemic. During the 2019-2020 school year, Southside ISD has had 120 substitutes. This year, they're reporting only 35. Sharon Fuery with the district says there are several reasons substitute teachers are not returning this year. They were worried about, you know, their health. Uh, having maybe pre-existing condi conditions are the health of people in their family, uh, you know, and just a little afraid of COVID. The district reporting about 50% of students are learning in person and teachers are in the classroom. Ferry says having substitutes is critical during the pandemic because teachers who get sick and experience COVID-19 symptoms must stay at home. Flu season is another concern. The district is reaching out to former substitutes, hoping some will return. San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers need your help to find the person responsible for robbing a local Dollar General store. Happened back on October 19th at Dollar General in the 7800 block of Marbach. Police say this suspect walked into the store, stole some items, then threatened an employee with a weapon when confronted. Suspect got away in a vehicle. If you have any information, call 210-224-STOP. You could be eligible for a cash reward. And time now is 436 and a chilly 48 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, a first look at how major airline is planning to jumpstart international air travel. Also next, with just five days to go, President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden head to Florida today to try to get last-minute voters on their side. And back outside with live cam. Yeah, 48 degrees here in town. We'll keep tabs on how chilly the hill country is again this morning. But wait, you see this extended forecast. It is top-notch. Much more to come right here as we get your day started on GMSA. 440 in your morning headlines. The candidates for president of the United States heading to the battleground state of Florida today as they make their closing arguments for why they deserve to lead the nation. Focus firmly on the pandemic. Former Vice President Joe Biden is vowing not to campaign in the election homestretch on the false promises of being able to end the pandemic by flipping a switch. Campaigning in Nebraska, the president acknowledged that some parts of the country are hurting, saying certain areas are heated, heated up right now. He also says that'll go down very quickly. All this as Americans continue to vote early, shattering records across the country. In central Vietnam this morning, a major typhoon has set off landslides that have killed at least 19 people and left 64 missing. The typhoon blew away roofs and knocked out power in a region home to 1.7 million people. The storm is equivalent to a Category 2 hurricane with winds up to 93 miles per hour. Vietnamese officials say it's the worst typhoon to hit the country in 20 years. Heavy rains and flash flooding expected to continue today. Investors will try to recover today after a crushing day on Wall Street. The Dow and S&P 500 saw their worst day since June. The Dow dropped 943 points. The S&P 500 lost 119. The Nasdaq Composite has performed this poorly since early September and lost 426 points. Analysts blame worries over rising COVID infections, new pandemic restrictions in Europe, and uncertainty around the upcoming election. And time now is 442 and 48 degrees. Holiday shopping season coming up fast. Up next, we have some of the best ways to help you get prepared ahead of the holiday hustle. Also next, how one major airline is trying to get people flying again as it starts testing all passengers on select flights. In this morning's GMA First Look, United Airlines announcing its plans to begin testing all passengers on select flights from Newark to London. We can operationalize this type of testing uh, to better support 
uh, the need for travel and opening up these markets again. The airline will offer a free rapid COVID test inside its United Club. The test is the Abbott ID Now, a molecular test that's widely used but not as sensitive as the lab-run PCR test and may not pick up patients with a low amount of virus in their system. The pilot program will launch just as cases in Europe are on the rise. I think this type of travel program uh, helps reassure people that we're not importing the virus or um, contributing it you know, to its spread. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you more about that test and its effectiveness. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Walk into many stores and the message is already pretty clear. The countdown to the holidays has already begun. And in this morning's Angie's List report, Sarah Costa has some tips to help you get prepared ahead of the holiday hustle. It's hard to believe the holidays are just a few weeks away and with that comes a lengthy to do list. But by taking advantage of early planning, you can get ahead of your preparations before the chaos arrives. So to help make a, most of your limited time, consider bringing in help. Hiring cleaning help around the holidays can really take the stress out of your life. Getting a few extra hours back while someone else tackles cleaning the kitchen or the bathrooms can really give you peace of mind. If you're planning to bring in help, make sure you're on their list. Mandy Lewis, the owner of Choice Cleaning, says her crews are booked well in advance during the holidays. When scheduling your services with a pro, remember to plan ahead and call early. The holiday season gets filled up really quick, and if you know when your party's going to happen, I would suggest to call right away and get on schedule. During your scheduling, be sure to ask about the additional services your cleaning service might provide to help lighten your load. Some of the services that we offer during the holiday period are things that don't normally get done. Clients like to hire us for doing extra things like guest rooms, appliances, windows, things that are only done a couple times a year, and the holiday season is a perfect time to do that. Stock up ahead of time so you can easily set out extra toiletries as well as extra blankets and towels once the guest room is ready, but don't let things become too cluttered. If you keep all your stuff picked up throughout the season, it's a lot easier for the pros to come in and take care of the cleaning that needs to be done instead of going around all the decorations and trees and presents and things. Keeping things clutter free also helps your home feel calm, orderly and ready to welcome guests. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. 447. Let's go ahead and check traffic with Officer Marcus Trujillo. And so far, looking very, very well especially after the start we had yesterday. As you can see, everything in the green, that's good. We don't want to see red. We really don't want to see white. White means there's absolutely no traffic. Roads are shut down. So uh, this looks very well this morning. Uh, no problems there. 410 Northwest Military Highway, 604 Kyle Seal. Only a handful of vehicles out there right now, all the way through 604 at Houndsman. And then 410 Highway 151. Traffic is moving along with no delays. Thank you, Marcus. Very good. And also promising the nice weather. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like Marcus pointed out, though, unlike the last couple of mornings, we don't have anything as far as because that really I mean, it was just that light stuff that was just making things a mess out there. Um, nothing but uh, really clear skies this morning should be a spectacular sunrise, although it won't be coming up for about another almost three hours and nice and cool and crisp out there. We've got temperatures in the uh, Del Rio still at 54, Carrizo Springs 52, but uh, low 40s out in Hondo as well as Uvalde. And, you know, we've had a lot of clouds the past couple of days. Things cleared out very nicely yesterday. And then you go upstairs in the atmosphere. Of course, the humidity is very low down here at the surface, but upstairs in the atmosphere, the water vapor imagery, when you start to see the darker shade is really dry air. And then this kind of looks like a desert that color that's bone dry air upstairs in the atmosphere which means we are going to have some just vivid vivid blue skies today it is going to be fantastic then down here at the surface the uh, dew point temperatures they will start to go up a little bit toward the weekend but we're still well below 60 so it's going to be comfortable but that'll you know just a, a hint more humidity then we have another front that's going to be moving on through here sunday into monday so that's going to knock the humidity back down again once we go into the first part of next week here's what the uh, satellite radar picture looks like nothing and uh, we just go right up to the north of us and there's still a little bit of kind of some wintry precipitation uh, up there in the panhandle then we go well off to the east and they are just getting inundated with rain that's the leftovers of hurricane uh, zeta and it's going to continue to work its way up to the northeast however it's running into some cold air so they're looking at some not only big heavy rain off to the northeast but also a lot of snow 
thanks to that thing. But for us now, unfortunately, like I said, downside is we don't have a drop of rain in the forecast, but we've got some fantastic weather. We're going to make it up to 60 today at noon. Breezy, the wind's going to start to pick up out of the uh, north and northwest at about 15, 20, 25 miles per hour. A little gusty at times, especially in the hill country. And then 68 for high temperature today. Plenty of sunshine, breezy, and, you know, we promised this fantastic streak of weather and living up to that, we've got these temperatures, you know, 40s, nice and cool, jacket weather in the morning, and then it's snow jacket in the afternoon. Although once the sun starts to go down, and this is definitely going to be the situation Saturday evening for Halloween, once that sun starts to go down, temperatures are going to cool off fairly quickly. We'll be running around 73 late in the afternoon on Halloween. And then don't forget, you set your clocks back an hour. Yay. As my, right. mom, as my mom says, back to God's time. And uh, <laughs> on Tuesday for voting, you know, a couple of clouds, but otherwise nice and pleasant out there. Um, by God, Mama was right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And beautiful days ahead. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Mike. 451, 48 degrees. Coming up next, more than eight years after her death, a look at how Whitney Houston is still setting records. Your lottery numbers pick three, seven, two, four, fireball nine. If you're still asleep, daily four, six, 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 five, <laughs> fireball nine. Cash five, 13, 21, 22, 28, 29. And Lotto, Texas, two, six, 19, 25, 43, 47. Your Powerball numbers, 11, 28, 37, 40, 53, Powerball 13, Power Play 2. Good luck. Woody Houston continues to set records, plus new episodes of Press Your Luck are back on ABC tonight. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. More than eight years after her death, Whitney Houston still setting records. Her 1987 sophomore album, Whitney, just went diamond, meaning it sold the equivalent of 10 million copies, making her the first black artist to have three diamond certified albums. The other two, her self-titled debut album in 1985 and 1992's The Bodyguard soundtrack. No whammies, stop. New episodes of Press Your Luck are back tonight, and I talked to host Elizabeth Banks about her favorite part of the job. Hands down, I get to give away life-changing money, and it's not my money. <laughs> It's a fabulous feeling. Catch Press Your Luck tonight on ABC. Could Grey's Anatomy flatline this year? Star Ellen Pompeo tells Variety there's no set date for the ABC drama to end. Quote, but the truth is, this year could be it. Creator Shonda Rhimes had said previously that when Pompeo says she's done, the show will be done. Season 17 premieres November 12th. And happy birthday, Rainbow. Blackish star Tracy Ellis Ross is 48 today. And actress Gabrielle Union is also 48. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Right now, it's about four minutes till 45 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, we speak to voters about how tension from the campaign trail is spilling over into our neighborhood streets. Are you ready for some Black Friday shopping? We'll tell you when Walmart is expected to announce their deals and discounts ahead in your morning Tech Bite. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Five days to go until Election Day. President Trump and former Vice President Biden holding dueling rallies in Florida today. I'm ABC's Elizabeth Schulze. The latest on the campaigns coming up. Masks no longer required while voting in Texas, at least for now. We'll have the latest on an appeals court decision. And taking a look out with live cam this morning, it is 45 degrees, it's nice and chilly, but it's going to be even nicer with the sunshine later on today. And a good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is October 29th. Yes, almost Halloween, and it actually feels like fall now. We had summer and then winter. Winter. And now yeah. we're in fall. Yeah, I'm still <laughs> absolutely baffled that we had a, our coldest October day since like 1925 the other day, Mike. Yep. It was the coldest uh, high temperature since mm -hmm. 1925 that we had the other day. And yeah, it has been, and this early, the coldest day, or it was the other day when we only hit a high temperature of 45 degrees. Yesterday, of course, we were 20 degrees above that, and today we're going to be well up, uh, well below normal still, but up there in the 60s again. So it's jacket in the morning and 
maybe not in the afternoon 45 right now dew points at 34 so the air is really really dry out there we've got a little bit of wind out of the uh, south and west and today we are going to make it up to the uh, upper 60s again mid to upper 60s around most all of the area which like i said is still well below normal by a good mm, 10 degrees or so the aquifer went up four tenths of a foot and the allergens we just have a little bit of mold showing up around the area right now there is a bit of a breeze this morning so we do have have a hint of a, a wind chill to deal with. Of course, these temperatures are in the 40s and 50s. Not quite as chilly in some spots as it was yesterday, although I do think we will continue to uh, drop down a few more degrees and there is a slight bit of a uh, wind chill. So at 45 feels like 42 right now, although at this time yesterday it felt like it was in the low 30s and we had a lot of 20s and low 30s wind chill. So not as bad, but again, wind is going to be picking up a little bit more uh, later on today. It's going to be shifting around more to the northwest and still will be fairly uh, blustery. So we've got mold on the low side and that's it showing up as far as any allergens are concerned. We dropped down a couple of more degrees this morning, ch clear and chilly and then 68 for a high temperature today. Just a gorgeous day and the beautiful prize winning weather is going to continue all the way through the weekend. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now and Officer Marcus Trujillo. Hopefully you get a little bit of a break in the action from the past couple of days. Well, it keeps you awake. <laughs> this early in the morning. Right now, as we take a look at the roadways, uh, everything's looking great out there. So, 410 to Callahan, no problems there. Travel in both directions, running smoothly. No delays in anyone's travel time that we can see. In Eintana Woodlawn, upper and low levels uh, show no problems there. 35 at Topper Wine, slight increase in the traffic, but still nothing that will delay you once you head out this morning. Mark. Marcus, thank you. New this morning, a driver had to be rescued from his vehicle following an overnight crash on the northeast side. This happened just after 11 last night. According to SAPD, two vehicles collided at the intersection of Judson Road and Independence Avenue after one of the vehicles went into the wrong lane. One of the vehicles was a minivan containing three kids. No one inside the minivan was hurt. The driver of that other vehicle was taken to the hospital with injuries to the leg and face. Election Day is just five days away and President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden will hold dueling rallies today in the critical state of Florida. Those candidates making vastly different closing arguments about the pandemic as cases surge across the country. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze is in Washington this morning with more. Five days to go and a record number of votes already cast. The final sprint of the race for the White House dominated by the coronavirus. As COVID cases surge in 45 states and the death toll exceeds 227,000, both candidates are holding fast in their starkly different views of the pandemic. Hello, Phoenix. In states like Arizona, where infections and hospitalizations are spiking, President Trump is flouting public health guidelines during packed rallies and downplaying the virus. And a safe vaccine is coming very quickly. You're going to have it momentarily that eradicates the virus and we're rounding the turn regardless. While former Vice President Joe Biden kept a lower profile Wednesday, emphasizing the toll of the virus and the importance of science. I'm not running into the false promise of being able to end this pandemic by flipping a switch. But what I can promise you is this. We will start on day one doing the right things. We'll let science drive our decisions. Biden slamming Trump's handling of the pandemic as new audio obtained by CNN sheds light on how the president undermined his own administration's guidance for a gradual reopening of states in April. The president's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, told Bob Woodward at the time the president wanted to take credit for the country's reopening. He's going to own the open up. That basically was we've now put out rules to get back to work. Trump's now back in charge. It's not the doctor's. Dr. Anthony Fauci responding Wednesday, saying if states had followed the plan to reopen more gradually, the COVID-19 surge now wouldn't be happening. If everybody had done that uniformly, I don't think we would be in the position we're in right now. Both President Trump and former Vice President Biden will be in battleground Florida today, where they will court a shrinking number of voters who have yet to cast their ballots. Nearly 7 million people in the state have already voted. Elizabeth Schulz, the ABC News, Washington. So let's get to the early voting totals here. Bear County, more than 29,000 people cast ballots Wednesday. That brings the total to 521,496. A reminder, polls will open until 10 p.m. today and tomorrow. Statewide, more than 8 million voters have been to the polls so far. U.S. Elections Project is also reporting more than 75 million votes cast across our country.
You no longer have to wear a mask at the polls, at least for now in Texas. Now a requirement that Texans wear a face mask when casting ballots during the pandemic lasted less than a day. But a federal appeals court has halted that order. Late yesterday, a three judge appellate panel stopped a district judge's ruling that invalidated an exemption for polling places included in Governor Greg Abbott's statewide mask mandate. The panel granted what's known as an administrative stay, which only stops the ruling from taking effect while the court considers whether it will issue an order to nullify it during the appeals process. The governor's mandate for Texans to cover their mouths and noses in public does not apply to polling places. It's an exclusion that has been challenged as discriminatory against black and Latino voters who are more likely to be harmed by the coronavirus. Abbott has previously said he encourages voters to wear a face mask, but said he excluded polling places from his mandate to prevent people from being turned away from voting just because they don't have a mask. A San Antonio family fighting to keep their dream alive amid health issues brought on by COVID-19. Lindsay and Harvey Sharon and their two children all tested positive back in July, but it was Harvey's health that took a turn for the worse. Lindsay says uh, he was hospitalized in ICU for more than a month. A couple opened Callahan's Ice House off Fredericksburg, but Lindsay has taken over the business while her husband recovers. But she says it hasn't been the same. This month, Bear County Commissioners approved a $4 million grant aimed at helping hard hit bars and restaurants recover. Lindsay filled out her application this week. She says with medical bills mounting, there's a lot at stake. I feel like this might be our last chance or of an option to get any help at all. Applications will continue to be taken till 5 p.m. November 2nd. Head over to our website at ksat.com to learn more on how to apply. And time now is 506 and 45 degrees for now. Still ahead, Walmart already announcing Black Friday sales, which begin earlier than you might think. Plus, some say all the signs point to a political battle playing out right in neighborhoods. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have more on that. And taking a look out with live cam this morning, it is a cold 45 degrees, but we're looking forward to beautiful sunshine once again. We're going to check in with Mike after the break. By many people's accounts, this may be one of the most heated campaign seasons on record. And it seems like tension from the campaign trail is spilling over onto our neighborhood streets. Katrina Weber spoke with people on both sides of the political aisle who say they're seeing signs of dirty politics close to home. A battle made for the ballot box seems to have moved to the streets. The signs show it's one dirty fight. They slice them, they deface them, they put horns on the individual's candidates. People are getting closer and closer to people's homes, running up and taking their flags directly from their porches. Although they don't agree on politics, both local Republican and Democratic leaders say they're getting reports of voting related vandalism, campaign signs damaged or disappearing from roadsides and outside people's homes. We've also had some other issues where uh, homeowners, children have been given letters about how racist their parents are for having Trump signs. I don't know why it's just this Divisiveness and hatred that just comes through. They see this as one of the most contentious campaign seasons. It's also costly to replace the signs. While this may be someone's idea of a joke or even dirty politics, it's still a crime, which means that depending on the amount of damage, it could be punishable by a fine or even jail time for anyone who's caught. San Antonio police don't keep track of this specific crime. This falls under criminal mischief or theft. Figures show no significant increases compared to last year, but it's possible people are not reporting it. The radar has gone to the other extreme that it has come to the craziness. What's unusual is that there is even more agreement between the sides. Both hope for unity. Where neighbor and neighbor uh, can talk about politics without getting so divisive. And a more peaceful community again. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Right now it's 512, 45 degrees. And still ahead, some of the biggest tech companies, including Amazon, are announcing their earnings for the third quarter. And we're taking a first look at Walmart's Black Friday sales, which start very, very soon.
Hey, my name is Joseph, and a little thing I love about Chick-fil-A nuggets is they're so good. Every single time, you bite into that nugget, and it's just so crispy, but somehow juicy. That perfect balance. And then if you just grab a couple sauces, you're going to be in heaven. Hey, I'm Chambry, and a little thing I love about Chick-fil-A's mac and cheese is how rich and cheesy it is. I just scoop the crispy top, and it's so good. It's so homey. It's like, wow, thank you. I needed that. By 15, Amazon expected to announce revenues approaching $100 billion for the third quarter today. ABC's Trevor Alt has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, important financial disclosures from big tech today. Amazon will unveil what could be record earnings from the last three months. One analyst says its revenues could be around $100 billion. Apple, Facebook, and Google's parent company also announced earnings today. Walmart has announced it will spread its Black Friday deals over three days, November 4th, November 11th, and finally November 25th, the day before Thanksgiving, extending into the actual Black Friday. Everything Everything from toys to electronics to home goods will be on sale. A holiday surprise for staffers at Facebook. All U.S. employees are getting the entire week of Thanksgiving off. According to an internal memo, it's meant as a reward for their work during these unprecedented challenges. CEO Mark Zuckerberg says the idea is to give as many people as possible a break. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. Well, you got a traffic alert on our phones in the last few minutes from Officer Marcus Trujillo. No longer smooth sailing out there, I guess, right, Marcus? No, we have a slight bump in the road, and that's going to be over on the east side. So we're going to the I-10-410 interchange over on the east side. We're looking at those southbound main lanes of 410 as you're exiting for westbound I-10. So coming back towards the downtown area right on that ramp of one vehicle accident. So just keep in mind that it is out there. Let's take a look. Uh, Highway 90, Sasamora, so far no problems there. Ten of Dominion looking pretty good. And then down here in the downtown area, I, ten at the Y, so far no problems around the fine silver curve. Very good. That is fine news. Yes, it <laughs> is early fine in the morning. News. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes. So a big full moon this weekend, Mike yep. goes to Hage, and you say it's going to be primetime viewing. Oh, it's going to be just it, perfect for Halloween. And, you know, we were talking the other day, and I remember the last time we had Halloween on Saturday, and there were a couple little sprinkly showers around in the evening. It was just eh, kind of put a little bit of a damper on things. But uh, this is beautiful after the cold, rainy day. The moon rise, of course, yes, it is going to be uh, just a couple of days away from being full, full on Saturday, which is just going to be spectacular for uh, Halloween for trick or treating. So bright as the sun is going down, the moon is going to be coming up. And yeah, it's going to be nice out there. Of course, that is the blue moon because it is the second full moon in the calendar month. We've got clear skies out there right now. Sunrise should be pretty darn nice as well. 45 here in town, 48 Rock Springs, Fredericksburg also at 48. Temperatures are for the time being up a little bit compared to what they were at this time yesterday. Of course, we did uh, dip down into the 30s and, and low 40s yesterday, and we had some wind chill temperatures that were really nasty. We still have a little bit of a wind chill, and it'll be breezy throughout the day, but nothing like what we had yesterday. Plus, it was damp yesterday, and we had that rain around there, which just was kind of bone chilling. We did make it up to 67 yesterday, and uh, only in the 50s in portions of the hill country. Today, about the same temperature, maybe uh, uh, around the area up just a, a couple of degrees on average, but we're looking at the mid to upper 60s at just about 10 degrees below the normal high temperature. And as far as anything other than uh, chilly mornings, nice afternoons, computer model through the next couple of days, you know, we'll see perhaps a couple of uh, morning clouds uh, over the weekend, a couple of them left over. Uh, Sunday and Monday, maybe just one or two of them out there. Same thing on Tuesday. Uh, there may be one or two extra clouds hanging around, but unfortunately, there's no rain getting squeezed out of any of those clouds. Of course, yeah, we love having the perfect fall weather around here, but we are in desperate need. We did pick up uh, just shy of a tenth of an inch of rain officially yesterday out there at the airport, which, yeah, nothing to sneeze at, but we need a whole lot more than that. B nothing in the forecast, however. 17 right now, International Falls. Most of the country is very, very cold, nice uh, wintry or fall temperatures, I should say, kind of wintry as well. And then you've got still this uh, pocket of warm air, Atlanta 74, but and they're also getting a ton of rain out there from the leftovers of Hurricane Zeta. There's the low that helped to give us some of the rain, and that's going to continue to work its way on out of here. And in behind that, we've got just a nice, tranquil weather pattern. We will get a little, a slight bit of a warm up mid 70s almost to normal readings by the end of the weekend and then Sunday into Monday 
Nice northwesterly flow is going to throw another front through here. Very weak front, but that'll uh, kind of shave temperatures off ever so slightly. And then hopefully, looks like there's another low that wants to develop by the uh, mid to latter part of next week. So hopefully that will give us a chance of rain. But again, not until maybe a week from now. We're going to be up to 60 today at noon. Sunny skies, a little bit on the breezy side. Wind out of the uh, northwest, north northwest at about 15, 20 miles per hour, gusting from there. And 68 for a high temperature today. Ah, oh, just a nice, nice day. Gets a little cool and, you know, a little nippy and if you're in the shadows in the direct sun, nice and pleasant out there. And this is going to last all the way through the weekend. High temperatures will make it up into the uh, kind of low to mid 70s. Still just shy of a normal high temperature over the weekend. And then back down to 70 on Monday. Beautiful fall election day. Wow, that just, I mean, gets better and better, it seems like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unlike the past couple of fronts, we've had strong fronts, but mm -hmm. it's lasted a day, two days. This is lasting all week. Yeah. Which you told us was going to happen. Yes, and we were so excited, yeah, and it's finally here. I to talk about it, too. <laughs> like, I knocked that one out of the park. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and I just dropped it. Click. That's what I get for gesturing. All right. Marcus, we may need you over oh, here in just works. a second. It still works. It still works. Good. Okay, we're good. I'd high five you, but you know. <laughs> but you know. It's 2020. 521, 45 degrees. <laughs> and coming up next in your morning spotlight, a sneak peek at a feature film about the young David Bowie, plus a first look at new Dracula graphic novel. Hmm. Lottery numbers pick three, seven, two, four, fireball nine. If your daily four numbers are superstitious, sorry, six, six, <laughs> six, five with a fireball of nine. Cash five looking at 13, 21, 22, 28, 29. Lotto Texas, two, six, 19, 25, 43, 47. And your Powerball numbers, 11, 28, 37, 40, 53, Powerball 13, power play two. Good luck. Today's entertainment report features three legendary figures, two musicians whose stories are headed for theaters and home video. Plus a look at the most famous movie vampire of all time. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. I don't want to go mad. I want to take my fantasies on stage with me. Here's your first look at Johnny Flynn as a young David Bowie, figuring out his iconic onstage personas in Stardust. Mark Maron and Jenna Malone co-star in the film, which arrives in theaters and on VOD November 25th. Frank embodied everything. You couldn't say, oh yeah, that's rock and roll, because it wasn't. It's jazz. No, it's pop music. No. Well, what the hell is it? It's Zappa. The father of the mothers of invention is the subject of the new documentary Zappa. Bill and Ted star Alex Winter directs this look at iconoclastic singer-songwriter, musician, band leader, and free speech advocate Frank Zappa. The doc plays in theaters one night, November 23rd, before debuting on demand November 27th. Legendary Comics is bringing back Dracula and the actor best known for playing him on screen. Bram Stoker's Dracula, starring Bela Lugosi, is a graphic novel which retells the classic vampire story. It goes on sale November 3rd. Info at legendary.com. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. That's kind of cool if you're into that stuff. Yeah, very nice. L like the graphics. 526, 45 degrees. And still ahead, the race for the White House continues as both President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden Head to Battleground State of Florida today. More details on a special event hosted by the city of San Antonio focusing on domestic violence. And are you looking to get away? We'll take a look at the top destinations Americans are traveling to ahead of the holiday season. Hi, good morning. Happy Thursday. It's October 29th, almost Halloween and feeling like fall. Fantastic forecast mm -hmm. ahead for the upcoming seven days. But let's focus on this morning and it is another jacket morning out there, but not near as cold as it had been. Mike Oster Hage. Well, yeah, and one big difference. I mean, temperature wise, we're very close to where we're down in the, the 40s around much of the area right now. But we don't have that damp chill out there because a dry air does not conduct heat. Moist air does. So when the, the the air is all nice and moist that can actually conduct heat away from your body. That's why a lot of times on a, a damp morning, it feels colder than if the actual temperature was colder on a dry morning. And we still have a little bit of wind as well. So that's putting the wind chills down to 42 degrees. Temperature right now is at 45 here in town. 41 Kerrville. Uh, yeah, it, and in some areas, it's not quite as uh, cool, actually, air temperature wise as what it was yesterday. And again, we don't have any of that mist or drizzle or anything like that to deal with. Mold is on the, the low side. And throughout the rest of today, clear, cold, 
nice morning, sunny, pleasant, beautiful, fantastic, all the other adjectives you can think of to describe today. And it's one of those days where you probably don't need a jacket later on. You get in the shadows, a little chilly, and then it will cool down pretty quickly. Uh, well, again, once the sun goes down, the weekend looks absolutely fantastic. Halloween trick or treating weather is going to be great. We've got the full moon. Set the clocks back, all sorts of good stuff going on this weekend. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo and got a push alert earlier. Still going on? That's one accident still in place, Mike. So we're going to move over to the east side. I-10, 410 interchange. We're looking at those southbound main lanes of 410 exiting for westbound I-10 for that accident. Still in the clearing stages, but take a look. Traffic there at 281 at Winding Way. Southbound lanes starting to pick up in volume. Here in the downtown area, 37, 35, the interchange so far still looking pretty good with no problems here. I-10 at the Y. Mark and Stephanie. Less than a week to go before Election Day 2020. That means President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden are hitting the campaign trail hard. CNN's Melissa Rainey has more details on how the candidates are working to draw in those final votes. Long lines and cold temperatures aren't holding voters back, as scenes like this are common around the country right now. More than 75 million Americans have reportedly already voted. That's more than half of the entire turnout in the 2016 election. This 101-year-old woman, proud to be part of that number. It just made me feel so good. And now... I know I am somebody. Meanwhile, the presidential candidates are amping up the push for votes. President Donald Trump stopping in Arizona Wednesday to announce a new plan aimed at helping the Hispanic community. The American Dream Plan will bring more than two million new jobs to Hispanic communities. Former Vice President Joe Biden campaigning in his home state of Delaware Wednesday, criticizing the Trump administration's response to the COVID-19 pandemic and promising things would differ in a Biden White House. We'll let science drive our decisions. We will deal honestly with the American people and we'll never, ever, ever quit. Looking ahead to the weekend, former President Barack Obama will join Biden on the campaign trail in the key battleground state of Michigan on Saturday. It's their first joint campaign appearance this year. Trump also focusing on battleground states as election day closes in. He will be in Tampa, Florida and Fayetteville, North Carolina on Thursday. I'm Alyssa Rainey reporting. The U.S. expected to release economic data today, including the third quarter gross domestic product. It's the broadest measure of economic activity, giving insight into how the economy is faring amid the pandemic. Compared to the prior three months, economists expect to see that between July and September, the economy expanded about 7 percent. They say the American economy is on track, on the right track, but not quite out of the woods. If the GDP forecasts are right, economic activity would be about $747 billion per year below its prior peak. The government is planning to pay for any future coronavirus vaccine for all Americans. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services says it will pay for any vaccine authorized or approved by the Food and Drug Administration. While the federal government is paying for the vaccine, insurers including Medicare, Medicaid and private plans must cover the cost of administering it. The agency says if the 62 million people in the Medicare program got vaccinated, it would cost around $2.6 billion. It has been called a shadow pandemic. The number of domestic violence cases growing as we try to shield ourselves from the virus at home. Today, the city will host its first symposium on domestic violence where experts and survivors will come together virtually. It's also a chance for you to step in and learn and understand the red flags for this issue and how to take action when you see something wrong. A moment to help those who you may know who may feel stuck in a violent relationship. In public health, we all know the signs of high risk of diabetes, high risk of heart attack, but do we know the same signs of high risk of a domestic violence um, relationship going bad? We don't. And so that's something we really want everyone in the community to know. There will be three main sessions, civil law, criminal law, and the community. Spurs player Patty Mills will lead the opening session today at 8.30 this morning. All sessions are free to the public. They'll also run tomorrow. And we have a full schedule with more info on KSAT.com. And time now is 535 and 45 degrees. Still ahead, a major fast food restaurant finally offering pizza on the menu thanks to popular demand. 
And up next, we're taking a look at the top road trip destinations Americans are trying to get away to for the upcoming holidays. But right now, we are embracing this beautiful weather here at home. Yeah, cold start to the day out there yet again as we're getting closer, wrapping up the month. But uh, wait do you see this extended forecast. We're looking awesome through Halloween and even Election Day still. Mike has details to come. Five thirty nine Americans making vacation plans through the end of the year, but remain cautiously optimistic about future travel plans, according to AAA. The CDC is also tracking the latest state and local travel restrictions. CNN's Mandy Gaither takes a look at some of the top road trip destinations some are considering. 67% of U.S. adults who are planning a vacation before the end of 2020 aren't certain they'll be able to take their vacations, according to a recent survey from AAA. Because of that uncertainty, some are waiting until the last minute before finalizing travel plans. The survey shows one in five who are planning a trip haven't yet booked it. They plan to do so within a week of traveling. Most trips, 80% will be road trips, and more Americans this year are heading to destinations known for outdoor recreation, like hiking and exploring state and national parks, places that allow for socially distanced fun. The top road trip destinations based on AAA searches since the summer include Denver, Colorado, Las Vegas, Nevada, Los Angeles, California, San Diego, and Seattle, Washington, rounding out the top five. Lower prices at the gas pumps may be adding to road trip fever this fall. The average U.S. gas price this month about 50 cents cheaper than this time last year. Fall prices haven't been this low since 2016. For Consumer Watch, I'm Mandy Gaither. Yeah, I already know I'm flying for Christmas and I'm Aww. looking forward to it. Going to take the necessary precautions, but I've had that book for, gosh, uh, couple months now. It's time. It's time. It's time. Mm -hmm. And a lot of folks are already partaking. My 40 right now, 45 degrees. And coming up next with Halloween coming up, dentists are reminding trick-or-treaters about the best and the worst candy for their teeth. And welcome back. It's 544. In your morning consumer headlines, Ford says it is back in the black thanks to strong demand for its trucks. The automaker reported that it earned nearly double the money that it did a year earlier and more than analysts, more analysts forecasted for the quarter. Now, Ford, along with other automakers, posted losses in the first half of this year. This after the pandemic caused auto plants to shut down and a dip in car sales. Heads up, Panera is adding pizza to the menu. The change has its response to fans who've been asking for years. But there's also a business reason, the pandemic hurting breakfast sales. So many restaurants like Panera are starting to shift their focus towards dinner items. Pizzas at Panera will be available in cheese, margarita, and chipotle chicken and bacon flavors. They'll cost eight to nine dollars. Comes at a time when McDonald's is going in the opposite direction. They've been adding new breakfast items, hoping the morning meal makes a bit of a comeback. Well, with Halloween and fall festivals coming up fast, you can bet that kids will be coming home with lots of candy, but some kinds of candy are perhaps better for your teeth than others. So here's what health professionals from University General Dennis say about the best and the worst candy to enjoy. Let's start with the bad news. First up, Sticky candy. The general rule is the stickier it is, the worse it is. Any type of sticky candy from airheads to starburst to now and laters will stay on the teeth longer, which lets bacteria thrive on the sugar and cause tooth decay. Even dried fruit can cause problems. Next, hard candy. Anything from Jolly Ranchers to peppermints, that's a problem. That's because you leave that kind of candy in your mouth longer and exposes your teeth to more sugar, which means higher chances of cavities. And avoid sour candy. Not only is it coated in sugar, it is also highly acidic, which is a horrible combination. So what are some better options? Number one, candy with nuts. A lot of time candy will stick to your teeth, but the crunch of nuts like almonds, peanuts, or cashews can help take it off. They are also a source of fiber and protein. Next, sugar-free candy. Since sugar is the number one enemy of teeth, this is your second best option. Dentists say sugar-free candy can also help with saliva production, which helps wash your mouth clean of bacteria and plaque. 
And last but not least, chocolate is what dentists say is the best candy for teeth. That's because it not only washes off teeth easier, you can also substitute milk chocolate with dark chocolate. Not only is it healthier, but some studies reveal that it can even help harden tooth enamel and help with fighting plaque. That's the good news, chocolate. Yeah, so it's not all bad. Not all bad. No, and experts reminding parents to keep these types of candy in mind as you go through your kids' trick-or-treat buckets. Uh, you, you know, I, I, uh, I appreciate a well-written meme. And speaking of candy, the one I saw this morning, uh -huh. I like eating nerds because I'm secretly hungry for aquarium gravel, and this takes the edge off. <laughs> Because it looks like it, you know, when you empty yeah. the little box out, it yeah. looks like aquarium gravel. Well, but don't eat aquarium gravel. No. Don't do it. No. I, well, and, and don't I, put nerds in the fish tank. I don't put nerds no, in the don't fish put tank. Nerds, I was going to say, my brother had a whole nother look on it because I loved right? nerds. He was like, hey, you are what you eat. And I'm like, oh. Favorite Halloween candy? <laughs> uh, Hershey. <laughs> ah, Hershey's. That's funny. <laughs> Hershey's. 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 I like Whoppers. Marcus? Chocolate. 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 Any, anything chocolate? Just chocolate, not chocolate with peanut butter, but just chocolate. Me too. Right now, as we take, and Kevin's favorite is, right now, as we take a look at the roadways, uh, we do have another major accident coming up. This one's going to be westbound I-10, right there at Callahan, getting reports of another major accident. So, folks, just remember, put away those distractions, those cell phones and those coffee cups, because uh, roads are dry, visibility is uh, pretty good for this time of the morning. So, uh, no real reason to be having these accidents other than just not paying attention. 604 at Military over there on the west side so far. No problems there. Favorite Halloween candy, Mr. Osterhey? Twix. Twix. Oh, that was Ooh, quick. He was one. ready. That's a good one, too. Uh huh. Well, and, and Starburst and everything else. I mean, it's one uh -oh. day. Come the on, Starburst. let's not overanalyze it. <laughs> I tend not to keep that stuff around throughout the year, so that's the kind of the time to splurge. You know exactly. Know I mean? Yeah. Exactly. You know, we always avoided the house that, that handed out the toothbrushes at, at, yeah. at Halloween. So. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> we did. I mean, you might don't want to keep do walking, it. son. <laughs> that, that one's no fun. <laughs> no, I'm talking about when we were kids. Not, oh, okay. Yeah, gotcha. not for my kids. No, but, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying, I can It's Halloween. Let's not go over it. <laughs> and the one with the full boxes of Cracker Jack, that was the best one in the corner of my uh, subdivision. Uh, I love this. When you're a toddler, it doesn't matter how cold it is. Amen to that. And think about when, you know, when kids hop in the pool and I'm sure I'm blue and then, I'm, I'm having fun. But, oh, it's so great. Great picture seeing a little one bouncing on the trampoline like that. All right. We've got clear skies right now. It's going to be just a fantastic morning. You can see... Uh, Navigation lights of uh, that uh, plane, the anti collision lights. 45 here in town, 50 Bernie stage, 41 in Hondo. Temperatures overall, especially in the hill country, are up a little bit compared to what they were yesterday. Still kind of uh, chilly out there. And where you have a temperature reading below 50, then the uh, formulas for the wind chills come into play. So it feels like 42 here in town, 39 Rio Medina as of right now. Wind is going to start to pick up. It's not bad right now out of the uh, west to southwest, about 5, 10 miles per hour. But notice up there in Kerrville, 25 mile per hour winds and the wind has shifted around to the northwest. So that's what we are going to start to see as the, uh, the morning rolls on and especially later on this afternoon. Water vapor imagery. This looks at the moisture or lack of upstairs in the atmosphere. First of all, Boy, pin the tail on the upper low right here, which was uh, moving across the northern portion of the state. This is what helped to give us some rain. And then also that wintry weather up there in parts of the panhandle. And now on the back side of it, it is pulling in all that very dry air. And so that's why we're going to have some beautiful blue skies around here. And of course, way off to the east, that is the leftovers of Hurricane Zeta which did make landfall as a category two storm, very strong category two storm. And now it's going to be just a huge rain producer and snow producer up there around New England. So they're getting uh, getting hit pretty hard by that thing elsewhere in the tropics. Of course, that's the leftovers of Zeta. There is nothing else that the Hurricane Center is uh, keeping an eye on. Things are starting to uh, kind of settle down a little bit, but we still technically have one more month to go in the, the tropical season. It goes all the way from the 1st of June to the end of November. 60 today at noon, sunny skies, beautiful day. Winds, like I said, are going to start to pick up a little bit more, so we'll make it up to 68 degrees. Oh, just a nice day. Yesterday was one of those. You get out in the sunshine. It's like, eh, jacket, no jacket. And you get in the shade. It's like, ooh, need jacket again. That's going to be the case uh, today and the next few days. Cool mornings, beautiful afternoons. And once the sun goes down or thinks about going down late in the day, it will start to cool off fairly quickly. So something to keep in mind. 
for the little trick-or-treaters, especially Saturday evening with that big, beautiful full moon out there. You think we're still going to have some trick-or-treaters this year? I, I think, think so. so. Yeah. I think I, so, too. I think so. I think uh, people who are giving out candy have been, you know, making changes. And right. I think um, trick-or-treaters are planning to, you know. So, so maybe be... set out a like, little car table with the stuff on it, and then you just kind of sit back in your lawn chair and mm -hmm. wish them a happy Halloween, right? I know. Good idea. I didn't think about that. <laughs> yeah. We can say, catch! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, as long as they get the candy, I think that's, that's the, that's the goal. Thing. Yeah. 551, 45 degrees. And a new movie now playing in select theaters and virtual cinemas based on a little known true story that led to major changes in how U.S. workers are protected on the job. We're going to have a preview next. Here's a million lottery numbers. We're going to blow through them real quick. Pick three, 724, Fireball 9, Daily 4, 6665, 5, Fireball 9. Cash 5, 13, 21, 22, 28, 29. Lotto Texas 2, 6, 19, 25, 43, 47. And your Powerball numbers, 11, 28, 37, 40, 53, Powerball 13, Power Play 2. Good luck. Welcome to American Radium. You are paid one cent per dial. This month's top painter. Josephine Cavallo. Abby Quinn and Joey King star in Radium Girls, sisters in the 1920s paid to paint glow-in-the-dark watch dials. You know, radium was considered the miracle elixir of all time. It had started shrinking tumors. People thought it was the cure-all. We believe that exposure to radium can cause devastating tissue damage. <laughs> radium is good for you. Everyone knows that. Learning otherwise is one thing, Proving it in court is something else. American radium is denying the harmful effects of radium. All they have to do is run out the clock. They could drag this out for years. You don't have years. If I didn't have to look out for you and all the stupid things you do, I don't think I could keep going with this. What are you talking about, the lawsuit? No, this. This slow motion death sentence. I just loved the script right away, but I was just so angry that I had no idea about it before. My first thought was, how have I never heard of this before? And then I think my second thought was, how is this not a movie yet? Um, so that everyone can hear about this story. Everyone put down your brushes. Radium is poison. Bessie, you're trespassing. I won't abandon you. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Well, we are five days away from Election Day. Our crews here at KSAP preparing to give you the best and latest coverage of the 2020 election, both on air and online. Here's a look at our live stream lineup. We'll have Election Day previews beginning Monday evening at 7 p.m. We'll also have two streams on Election Day, one in the morning and live election returns and reaction to election night itself. Then catch up on everything you need to know Wednesday morning and then again at 7 p.m. You can watch any and all of these live streams uh, on KSAT.com on your phone or on your KSAT TV app, streaming on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon, Fire Stick, and more. And a reminder, we're just a day away from the virtual Day of the Dead River Parade. The two-hour parade starts tomorrow night at 8. You can watch it right here on KSAT, KSAT 12, and streaming on the KSAT TV app. Months, uh, cooler months are almost here. Well, heck, they are here. If you uh, own a home, there are several things you need to think about ahead of the next hour of GMSA. We'll look at some things you should include on your fall home maintenance checklist. And we'll get updated on any accidents that have popped up in the last few minutes. And I think we have at least one new one. We'll get up to speed with Marcus next. point to a political battle playing out right in neighborhoods. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have more on that. A driver had to be rescued from his vehicle following this crash overnight on the northeast side. We'll have details on what happened and the driver's condition. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning it is a chilly 45 degrees right now. So definitely grab your jacket for now. But you know what? We're looking forward to some sunshine. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now.
And good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is October 29th and we're in the mid 40s to start out our Thursday. Yes, uh, so I grabbed the jacket. I know I'll probably lose it a little later, you know, this afternoon. Uh, very nice yesterday afternoon. Great for a bike ride or outdoor activities. Oh yeah, by lunchtime it was great. But Mike, as you were hinting at earlier in the newscast, it was still chilly in mm -hmm. the shade. Yeah, and that's going to be the case in the next uh, couple of days. Mm -hmm. A lot of sunshine in the afternoons. Uh, it is going to be breezy today. And then also once that sun starts thinking about going down, it'll cool off fairly quickly yeah. with this dry air in place. But yeah, just absolutely sensational weather and just waiting for the sun to come up. It's still going to be about uh, an hour and a half or so, but well, you know, well, maybe about maybe by seven o'clock we start seeing some of the early morning glow of the, the sunrise. Still at 45 here in town, 42 Helotus. Temperatures are up a little bit compared to yesterday, especially in portions of the hill country. Now in some places we still have, of course, temperatures above 50. The formulas don't come into play, but we still have temperatures uh, wind chill temperatures down in the uh, 30s and some low 40s around here. But then also the big difference is too, we don't have the moisture to deal with. So you don't have that damp chill that really sneaks down the back of your neck. So it's a, actually a little more pleasant this morning, but still grab a jacket. Mold is on the, the low side and uh, throughout the rest of today temperatures. Like I said, I think we dropped down a couple of more degrees when it's all said and done. And then wind is going to start to pick up as well. We'll warm up very nicely, making it up to right around 60 today at noon and then top off by yesterday's temperature, although still about 10 degrees below normal. Like I said, it is going to be kind of breezy up to 68, plenty of sunshine and the fantastic weather continues all the way through the weekend. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. All the wonderful folks in blue. Especially the man with the pink patches on his arm, Officer Marcus Trujillo. Well, thank you, Mike. And mm -hmm. right now things look pretty good, and we have an accident that uh, kind of moved around on us a little bit. Uh, reported as uh, Einton and Callahan. It's actually right before 410, but it is on the westbound main lane. So as we take a closer look, westbound main lanes as you're approaching. 410 right after Vance Jackson. You have that long curve. That's where we have that accident. So hopefully we'll get that tow truck out there, get everything hooked up and get that vehicle moving along its way. Only the left hand lane blocked at this time. Traffic's kind of light right now, so really not slowing anyone down at this time, but we will keep an eye on it for you. Marcus Stephan. Thank you, Marcus. Right now we're on top of late breaking news. San Antonio police are investigating a carjacking. It happened at a Wendy's on San Pedro just outside of Loop 410. Our Katrina Weber just arrived at that scene. Now, Katrina, what can you tell us about what's happening out there right now? Well, good morning. Uh, yeah, that is how the call came in as a carjacking. A man says he was hit in his head and he originally told police that his truck was taken. But this is his truck right here. Uh, police did find it apparently right where he left it. See, the victim had gone. Uh, he says that two men dragged him out of his truck, hit him in the head, and then they ran off, as did he. He ran to uh, a Wendy's about two blocks away. That's where he called for help, originally thinking that those men had taken his truck. But again, when police got here to the 9500 block of San Pedro, they found his truck still here. The men who assaulted him, they say, took off. Police did have their helicopter up looking for them, but so far have not found anyone. The victim right now is in the back of that patrol car. Uh, paramedics are here checking him out, but it doesn't appear that uh, he has any kind of injuries where he would need to go to the hospital, but they are attending to him in the back of the police car. Uh, and again, police still looking for the men who attacked him this morning, but apparently did not carjack him after all. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Happening now in France, police in Nice are responding to a knife attack at the Notre Dame Basilica. Information is still very limited right now, but Nice police say at least three people are dead. The mayor says the attacker was shot by police but is alive and has been taken into custody. France's interior minister says he is chairing a crisis meeting in response to the attack. France's President Emmanuel Macron plans to travel to Nice today. New this morning, a driver recovering in the hospital after a crash on the northeast side. Happened just after 11 last night. Police say two vehicles crashed at the intersection of Judson and Independence Avenue after one of the vehicles went into the wrong lane. One of the vehicles was a minivan with three kids inside. Fortunately, no one in the minivan was hurt. The driver of that other vehicle was taken to a hospital with injuries to the leg and face. 
San Antonio police and Crime Stoppers need your help tracking down the person responsible for robbing a local Dollar General. It happened on October 19th at the Dollar General located in the 7800 block of Marbach Road. Police say the suspect walked into the store, stole some items and threatened an employee with the weapon when confronted. The suspect got away in a vehicle. If you have any information about this case, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at number 210-224-STOP. SAPD and Crime Stoppers asking for information on this suspect who walked into a Circle K posing as a customer and later robbed the cashier. This all happened last Thursday at the Circle K located at 1604 and New Gilbo Road at around 3 in the morning. Police tell us the man walked to the counter, pointed a gun at the cashier and asked for cash. Suspect then left. If you have any information on who this might be, call 210-224-STOP. Turning now to the coronavirus pandemic in Bear County, there is another rise in coronavirus cases with our seven day average now above 200. City health officials reporting more than 280 new COVID-19 cases and three new deaths. However, the numbers of hospitalizations continues to decrease. 225 COVID-19 patients are in the hospital. That is 13 fewer than Tuesday night. 84 patients are now in the ICU. 44 are on ventilators. Southside Independent School District here in San Antonio struggling to find substitute teachers during the pandemic. During the 2019-2020 school year, Southside ISD had 120 substitutes. This year, only 35. Sharon Fury with the district says there are several reasons subs are not returning this year. They were worried about, you know, their health. Uh, having maybe pre-existing condi conditions are the health of people in their family, uh, you know, and just a little afraid of COVID. Southside says about 50% of students are learning in person and teachers are in the classroom. Fury says having substitutes is critical during the pandemic because teachers who get sick and experience COVID symptoms must obviously stay at home. Flu season is another concern. The district says they're reaching out to former substitutes, hoping that some will come back. Well, a mix up during a flu shot clinic leads to the wrong student being vaccinated. Habit at Steubing Ranch Elementary in Northeast ISD. Now, the district says they worked with a third party administrator who called up students who had parental consent forms for the flu shot. Northeast tells us the mix up happened between two kids whose names sound nearly identical. The district says one boy thought his name was called, received the shot, even though he did not have the proper paperwork. According to Northeast ISD, Health Hero America administered the flu shot, was supposed to verify the information matched to the students. In a statement, the district said, quote, in part, it was the first time any ISD used Health America Hero and will likely be the last, end quote. Family says they did not allow their child to get the vaccine after an earlier experience with a shot. The boy's parents withdrew the child from the district and are looking for alternative options. The Salvation Army is asking for donations of new blankets for its emergency family shelter. The organization says as cooler temperatures have made their way to San Antonio, their shelter's blanket supply is now empty. The supply had been lower than usual in recent months because of fewer donations. The shelter is also in need of new towels, toiletries, and hygiene products. If you want to help out, donations may be dropped off at the emergency family shelter entrance at 515 West Elmira. By many people's accounts, this is probably one of the most heated campaign seasons on record, and now it seems the tension from the campaign trail is spilling right over onto the neighborhood streets. Our Katrina Weber spoke with people on both sides of the political aisle who say they're seeing signs of dirty politics close to home. A battle made for the ballot box seems to have moved to the streets. And the signs show it's one dirty fight. They slice them, they deface them, they put horns on the individual's candidates. People are getting closer and closer to people's homes, running up and taking their flags directly from their porches. Although they don't agree on politics, both local Republican and Democratic leaders say they're getting reports of voting related vandalism, campaign signs damaged or disappearing from roadsides and outside people's homes. We've also had some other issues where uh, homeowners, children have been given letters about how racist their parents are for having Trump signs. I don't know why it's just this 
divisiveness and hatred that just comes through. They see this as one of the most contentious campaign seasons. It's also costly to replace the signs. While this may be someone's idea of a joke or even dirty politics, it's still a crime, which means that depending on the amount of damage, it could be punishable by a fine or even jail time for anyone who's caught. San Antonio police don't keep track of this specific crime. This falls under criminal mischief or theft. Figures show no significant increases compared to last year, but it's possible people are not reporting it. The radar has gone to the other extreme that it has come to the craziness. What's unusual is that there is even more agreement between the sides. Both hope for unity. Where neighbor and neighbor uh, can talk about politics without getting so divisive. And a more peaceful community again. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Right now, 610, 45 degrees. Walmart extending its Black Friday sales. We're going to have more on when you can get all the details still ahead on GMSA. Of course, the holidays will be here before we know it. That's why planning ahead is so important. Next, we'll have some tips on helping you getting prepared for the holiday hustle, hustle, especially at your house. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning. What a wonderful weather week. Uh, we had winter, and now we're back in fall after summer last week so we are experiencing all the seasons for now 45 degrees we're going to check in with mike after the break and welcome back at 6 14 so halloween is saturday but walk into any store and the message is clear the countdown to the holidays has already started and this morning's angie's list report sarah costa has uh, at least one tip to help you get prepared ahead of the holiday hustle it's hard to believe the holidays are just a few weeks away, and with that comes a lengthy to-do list. But by taking advantage of early planning, you can get ahead of your preparations before the chaos arrives. So to help make a, most of your limited time, consider bringing in help. Hiring cleaning help around the holidays can really take the stress out of your life. Getting a few extra hours back while someone else tackles cleaning the kitchen or the bathrooms can really give you peace of mind. If you're planning to bring in help, make sure you're on their list. Mandy Lewis, the owner of Choice Cleaning, says her crews are booked well in advance during the holidays. When scheduling your services with a pro, remember to plan ahead and call early. The holiday season gets filled up really quick, and if you know when your party's going to happen, I would suggest to call right away and get on schedule. During your scheduling, be sure to ask about the additional services your cleaning service might provide to help lighten your load. Some of the services that we offer during the holiday period are things that don't normally get done. Clients like to hire us for doing extra things like guest rooms, appliances, windows, things that are only done a couple times a year, and the holiday season is a perfect time to do that. Stock up ahead of time so you can easily set out extra toiletries as well as extra blankets and towels once the guest room is ready, but don't let things become too cluttered. If you keep all your stuff picked up throughout the season, it's a lot easier for the pros to come in and take care of the cleaning that needs to be done instead of going around all the decorations and trees and presents and things. Keeping things clutter free also helps your home feel calm, orderly and ready to welcome guests. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. 616. Let's go ahead and check traffic with Officer Marcus Trujillo. And we've had accident after accident this morning. And now it's clear. Okay. So that's the great news. The roads are <laughs> turning back to normal. Bad news is we did have a couple of bumps in the road this morning, but that accident there, I-10 on the westbound main lanes between Vance Jackson and 410 has cleared. So all lanes are open once again. Currently, there's no delays in anyone's travel times. That is good news. Fantastic news. Mike trade starting out in the mid 40s out there. And it's time to roll that school bus. Ah, uh, yes, indeed. And warm up the school bus a little bit because uh, as well as your car, because it's still pretty chilly out there. We're in the mid 40s right now. I think we dropped down a couple of more degrees. Now, of course, uh, it's not overly windy right now, but the wind is going to start to pick up. And the other thing we don't have to deal with this morning, of course, wet roads or all that dampness in the air. That's what, you know, it's that ding up chill that really gets you and kind of sneaks down the back of your neck. But that's not the situation today. After school, we're going to be up to 68 degrees. Really, really nice. And it's one of those, do you need jacket? Yes, but then you get the, if you get in the shadows and the sun, you don't. So 
Isn't that nice trouble to have? Anyway, take a look at this picture. It, the clouds really cleared out of here a little bit, uh, honestly, a little sooner than expected by uh, kind of mid to late morning. All of them started to scooch off to the east, and we were left with nothing but blue skies out there. And speaking of blue skies, yeah, it's going to be just sensational today because we've got some really dry air upstairs in the atmosphere. Thank you for the KSAC Connect picture. And we're not seeing anything yet, but hopefully in about uh, maybe... A little bit less than an hour, we start to see the, the glow of the morning sunrise. All right, speaking of sunsets, of course, it, it's a time to fall back this weekend. That's going to be Saturday night after, before you go to bed because the official date, of course, is Sunday, the first Sunday in November. But sunsets uh, about uh, 10 till 7 right now. And on Halloween, it sets at 647. Of course, prior to it actually setting, it will start to cool off, obviously. And then on Sunday, 547. But the good thing is is then it's going to be that much brighter as the uh, kids are heading off to school on Monday morning. 45 in town, 47 lost maples, a couple of 50s out there. So yes, yeah, some areas temperatures are up a little bit compared to yesterday. Still jacket weather, obviously, and we have somewhat of a wind chill to deal with. 37 Rio Medina, 36 now at Hondo is the wind chill and 41 here in town. Dew point temperatures measure moisture in the atmosphere, which really dropped down. Of course, we'll start to come back up a little bit over the weekend. Not anything like not it's going to be humid. It's just they'll come up slightly, but then we get another good shot of some drier air moving in here by the first part of next week. So as long as all these numbers are well below that line right there, the 60 degree line, everything's good. And the drier it gets, uh, well, it, you can get much colder in the, in the mornings with the very dry air down to 14 right now at International Falls. And really the only section of the country that has any uh, sort of warm weather is down there to the uh, the southeast. All right, forecast for us. We have got just sensation. You know, we've been talking about how yesterday afternoon or even late morning was going to be the start of this streak of just picture perfect weather and it has begun. We are right in the middle of it and 60 at noon, sunny, breezy wind out of the uh, northwest, about 15, 20, 25 miles per hour, maybe gusting at times, especially in portions of the hill country. 68 with plenty of sunshine today. Sun goes down, cools off kind of quickly down the mid 40s again tomorrow, upper 40s on uh, Saturday morning, 50 Sunday and temperatures will be kind of getting up into the uh, almost mid 70s, close to a normal high temperature over the weekend. And then we get a little uh, shot of you know, just kind of trim temperatures a little bit first of the week and one or two clouds out there. Beautiful weather through the middle of next week. Have you seen a better forecast in a while than that? Uh -uh. We haven't either. Mm -hmm. No, but I, I mean, think it's because our patience paid off. Because mm -hmm. the reward. Know, yeah, it was because yeah, it was really warm there for a while. And, you know, we got in the 90s and everything and close to records not too long ago. And then, you know, this forecast, which, yeah. Yeah. Smiles, everyone smiles yeah. right now. 620, 45 degrees. And a major U.S. airline planning to test every passenger on some flights. Next, we have the details in today's GMA First Look. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. It's Macy's friends and family. Get an extra 30% off everything you need to get ready for the holidays. Plus, get 15% off fragrances, skincare, makeup, and more. Going on now at Macy's. Imagine feeling fearless at the dentist. Imagine strengthening enamel while preventing cavities 70%. Act anti-cavity. Stop imagining. Start acting. And get anti-cavity protection with our dye-free ice formulas. No matter what sometimes keeps you up, Nature Made helps you win the night. Our extended release melatonin helps you fall asleep and stay asleep. Nature Made, the number one pharmacist recommended vitamin and supplement brand. When they're sick, they get comfortable anywhere and spread germs everywhere. Wherever they rest, protection. Nothing kills more viruses, including the COVID-19 virus, on more surfaces than Lysol disinfectant spray. Lysol, what it takes to protect. In this morning's GMA First Look, United Airlines announcing its plans to begin testing all passengers on select flights from Newark to London. We can operationalize this type of testing uh, to better support 
uh, the need for travel and opening up these markets again. The airline will offer a free rapid COVID test inside its United Club. The test is the Abbott ID Now, a molecular test that's widely used but not as sensitive as the lab-run PCR test and may not pick up patients with a low amount of virus in their system. The pilot program will launch just as cases in Europe are on the rise. I think this type of travel program uh, helps reassure people that we're not importing the virus or um, contributing it you know, to its spread. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you more about that test and its effectiveness. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Today, Amazon will unveil what could be record earnings from the last three months. One analyst says revenues could be about $100 billion. Apple, Facebook, and Google's parent company also announced their earnings today. Walmart is announcing it will spread its Black Friday deals over three days, November 4th, November 11th, and finally, November 25th, the day before Thanksgiving, extending into the actual Black Friday. The retail giant says everything from toys to electronics to home goods will be on sale. Holiday surprise for staffers over at Facebook. All U.S. employees are getting the entire week of Thanksgiving off. According to an internal memo, it's meant as a reward for their work during the unprecedented challenges. Mark Zuckerberg says the idea is to give a break as to as many people as possible. Google is teaming up with NOAA for climate research. The tech giant will explore the benefits of artificial intelligence and machine learning when it comes to the use of satellite and environmental data. These projects will hopefully enhance NOAA's ability to research climate, monitor the environment, and forecast the weather. The agreement is for three years. Thursday morning time check right now, 626, 45 degrees. And you no longer have to wear a mask when going to the polls. We're going to have the details about what the governor is saying about that. Five days to go and a record number of votes have already been cast. We have the details on events being held today by both presidential campaigns. And a quick check of the roads with TransGuy. There's I-10 and Vance Jackson. Things looking okay for now. We're going to check in with Marcus Trujillo after the break. We are following the news of a terror attack happening in France. We're going to have the details. Five days to go until Election Day. President Trump and former Vice President Biden holding dueling rallies in Florida today. I'm ABC's Elizabeth Schulze. The latest on the campaigns coming up. And outside with live cam right now looking back towards downtown. It's cold here in the Alamo City, but uh, wait to see this forecast. It was looking good and now it is looking great. Hi, good morning. It's Thursday, October 29th. Thanks for joining us. Let's go straight to Mike Ostrich to get an update on how much of a warm up we could see later on today. Yesterday turned out just fabulous, Mike. Yeah, we gained uh, about 25 degrees during the day yesterday or so, and that's going to be the situation again today, about 20 to uh, 25 degrees overall. We've got some clear skies as of right now, and we are at 45, dew points at 35, a little bit of wind out there. I think we dropped down a couple of more degrees, uh, just a few degrees here in the next couple of hours. Overall, temperatures are actually up ever so slightly, uh, especially in the hill country compared to yesterday. And boy, go upstairs in the atmosphere, and we've got some really, really dry air up there and so that just means that you're going to have that vivid shade of blue sky. We're going to have some gorgeous, gorgeous sunrise, gorgeous sunset, the moon rise today. The moon's almost full, technically full on Saturday. Just spectacular to do a little bit of uh, gazing up to the sky. Mold is on the low side. And as far as uh, this morning, yeah, clear, chilly, grab a jacket this afternoon. It's one of those where yeah, you need a jacket if you're in the, the shade, but if you're in the sun, you don't. And then once the sun starts to go down, you're going to make sure that your jacket's handy. But just pleasant, beautiful temperatures, about 10 degrees below normal. And the weekend, fantastic. We'll make it up into the uh, about mid-70s by the end of the weekend with those cool mornings around here. Great trick-or-treating weather. Is there any rain anywhere in sight? Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Officer Marcus Trujillo and looking at the map looks pretty good. So we've hit the reset button. Oh, good. Okay. Cleared all the accidents. We hit the reset button. We're going to start over. Hopefully we can go the rest of the uh, morning uh, without any accidents. So we'll see what happens. Right now, as we take a look outside through Transguide, 35 up there at Topper Wine, you can see north and southbound lanes at 35. Start to pick up in volume, so don't delay too much before you hit out. And just remember, buckle up and put away those distractions. Marcus Stephanie. Thank you, Marcus. One man's warning's gotten off to a scary start on the city's north side. He told police he was dragged out of his truck and beaten. 
Katrina Weber is live where it happened in the 9500 block of San Pedro. Now, Katrina, you mentioned early that police initially thought this was a carjacking. Yeah, there was some confusion in the beginning, and it seems that it's mainly because that's the victim. That's what the victim thought had happened to him. As it turns out, his truck is still here right where uh, he was pulled out of it. Right now, we have crime scene investigators going through there taking fingerprints from that truck. The victim is in a police car. He was checked out by paramedics here at the scene. He did not have to go to the hospital. But this happened uh, around 530 this morning. That man telling police that uh, two men pulled him out of his pickup and then beat him up, uh, he was able to run about two blocks away where he called for help. So he originally thought that they had taken off in his truck, but it turns out they also ran away. They left the truck right here. Police say they did find the man's wallet inside the truck. Uh, they didn't find the suspects, though. They had their helicopter up earlier looking for those two men, but did not uh, find anyone, did not make any arrests. So they're trying to put together the pieces of what exactly happened here. But it does look like the man was uh, did suffer some minor injuries anyway uh, in this attack on him. Police still not sure why it happened. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, we have some breaking news this morning. Police in the French city of Nice are responding to a knife attack at Notre Dame Basilica. Police say three people are dead. The attacker shot by French police, but is alive. The mayor of that town describing this attack as an act of terror. He says the suspect has been taken into custody. France's interior minister says he is chairing a crisis meeting in response to the attack. France's president, Emmanuel Macron, plans to travel to Nice later today. Zeta has weakened into a tropical storm, but it's still causing damage. The storm is sweeping through the south with sustained winds. Wednesday, Hurricane Zeta made landfall in Louisiana as a Category 2 storm. Its strong winds, heavy rains, and dangerous storm surge has caused at least one death in New Orleans. So far, Zeta has caused substantial power outages across at least four states. Election day five days away. President Trump and former Vice President Biden are holding dueling rallies today in the critical state of Florida. The candidates are making different closing arguments about the coronavirus pandemic as cases surge across the country. ABC's Elizabeth Scholzley is in Washington with the latest. Good morning. The United States Elections Project says more than 75 million Americans have already voted in this election. That's more than half of the total vote count in 2016. And the early voting numbers are especially high in some swing states where the candidates are devoting the final days of the campaign. Five days to go and a record number of votes already cast. The final sprint of the race for the White House dominated by the coronavirus. As COVID cases surge in 45 states and the death toll exceeds 227,000, both candidates are holding fast in their starkly different views of the pandemic. Hello, Phoenix. In states like Arizona, where infections and hospitalizations are spiking, President Trump is flouting public health guidelines during packed rallies and downplaying the virus. And a safe vaccine is coming very quickly. You're going to have it momentarily that eradicates the virus and we're rounding the turn regardless. While former Vice President Joe Biden kept a lower profile Wednesday, emphasizing the toll of the virus and the importance of science. I'm not running in the false promise of being able to end this pandemic by flipping a switch. But what I can promise you is this. We will start on day one doing the right things. We'll let science drive our decisions. Both President Trump and former Vice President Biden will be in battleground Florida today, where they will court a shrinking number of voters who have yet to cast their ballots. Nearly 7 million people in the state have already voted. Elizabeth Schulz, the ABC News, Washington. Now to the latest early voting totals in Bear County. More than 29,000 people cast their ballot on Wednesday. That brings the total number of voters to 521,496. Statewide, more than 8 million voters have visited the polls so far. The U.S. Elections Project is also reporting more than 75 million votes have been cast across the nation. We just want to remind you here at home, polls will be open until 10 p.m. today and tomorrow. Ready for more confusion? When going to the polls, you no longer have to wear masks, at least for now. A requirement that Texans have a mask on when they vote lasted less than one day, but a federal appeals court has halted that order. A three-judge appellate panel stopped a district judge's ruling that invalidated an exemption for polling places included in Governor Greg Abbott's statewide mask mandate. 
The panel granted what's known as an administrative stay, which only stops the ruling from taking effect while the court considers whether it will issue an order to nullify it during the appeals process. The governor has previously said he encourages voters to wear a mask, but said he excluded polling places from the mandate to prevent people from being turned away from voting just because they don't have a mask. And again, we're five days away from Election Day, and here at KSET, we're preparing to give you the latest and best coverage of the 2020 election, both on air and online. We're going to have Election Day previews beginning Monday at 7 p.m. We'll also have two streams on Election Day, one at 7 in the morning, and live election returns and reactions at 7 p.m. on Election Night. Then you can catch up on everything you need to know Wednesday morning, and then again at 7 p.m. on Wednesday evening. You can watch any and all of these live streams on KSET.com, on your phone, or on the KSET TV app, streaming on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Fire Stick, and more. The number of domestic violence cases has grown as we try to shield ourselves from the coronavirus at home. Today, the city is hosting its first symposium on domestic violence, where experts and survivors will come together virtually. This is also a chance for you to step in and learn and understand the red flags for this issue and how to take action when you see something wrong. A moment to help those you may know and they may feel stuck in a violent relationship. The three main sessions, civil law, criminal law, and the community, Patty Mills of the San Antonio Spurs will lead the opening session at 8.30 this morning. They are free to the public. That symposium will also run tomorrow. And for a full schedule and more on how to hook up, go to ksat.com. And time now is 639 and a chilly 45 degrees for now. The cooler months finally here. And if you own a home, there are several things to think about. We'll take a look at what you should include on your fall home maintenance checklist. 643 before the weather gets colder. It's important to prepare for those winter months to prevent costly damage or heating bills. There are some simple fall preventative home maintenance steps that every homeowner should follow. And this morning's Angie's List report, Max Massey takes a look at the fall home maintenance checklist. As you pull out your jackets more than your flip flops, it's time to tackle a few simple chores around the house. First up, check the insulation. So there's a leak right there. The key to keeping cold out is finding how it's getting in. The first sign of cold is a great time to check the seals around your windows and doors. And an easy do it yourself way to do that is to take a candle around in front of the windows lit. And if it flickers, then you probably have a draft that needs attention. If you're starting to see cracks in your caulking, don't worry. It's an easy task with the right tools. Don't go cheap on a caulk gun because then you'll have a caulk gun that stays triggered and then it continues to spread the caulk. So don't get a real cheap caulk gun. Get one that works really well. Before the cold weather really hits, make sure your gutters are clear of leaves and debris. For your own safety, make sure your chimney is clean, service your furnace, and change the filter. Show some love to your water heater. Many homeowners don't think about their water heater until it goes out and they get a cold shower, but there is some simple maintenance you can do that can really increase the efficiency of your water heater. Simply by draining the water heater once a year, you can increase its efficiency by 50%. Be sure your summer equipment, like your lawnmower, is appropriately maintained and appropriately stored. Fuel is the biggest issue on uh, storage of a mower over the winter time. Either run it out of fuel and store it completely empty or stabilize the fuel and store it full. It's also a good idea to get a roof inspection in the fall. Just remember, finding and repairing any minor damage now could save big bucks in the colder months. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. And if you ask real nice, Mike will come do all these things at your house. You just got to get on <laughs> schedule. Thank so, you, Mike. He's, he's so handy to have around. Yes, thank but you. But do you Mike. have that awesome uh, Duluth bib that he was wearing? No. no. Okay. No. All right. He Let's, just gets the job done. That's right. Let's check traffic. I know uh, I saw another alert pop up on my phone again this morning, Marcus. Yes, but you are correct. Ma Mike is the handyman, and you always run for tacos. So there's the order on the table. All right now, as we take a look. Uh, <laughs> Getting this report of a double rollover accident. So southbound 410 Access Road, that road where it turns to the westbound access road of Highway 151. So let's take a look at a couple of Transguide cameras there. Uh, there we have one of the vehicles, as you see right there, right before that concrete pillar. So that's one of the vehicles. And up ahead, we have a second one. So we're moving over to this Transguide camera. You can see starting to get a little bit of backup there on the access road. Once again, not on the main lanes, but with all those flashing lights, it will be a visual distraction for all those folks at the uh, Highway 151 410 interchange. I will make a taco run soon. You have my word. 
for everybody in the studio. <laughs> Not everybody <laughs> home. Not everybody at <laughs> home. That's a lot Mike, of you just said he's buying breakfast. Soon is kind of an open-ended. It'll be. It'll happen in the next month. I promise you that. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very nice. No complaints here. I'm in leaving my next, options open. In the next month, you mean the next month that's coming up or the end of this month? Right. Oh. By, by 2021? We'll she, take either. That's two months. <laughs> oh, no, that's 14. Anyway, <laughs> hey, I'm a um, pretty not committal guy. <laughs> Marcus, could you get a good answer on him? Anyway, here's what uh, we're going to be seeing the next couple of days. Beautiful. It is going to be coming up just as the sun is going down in the west. The moon comes up in the east. And, of course, we're just only a couple of days away from it being a full moon. And we're not seeing any glow. Actually, it's about an hour until the sun comes up. So no glow of the sunrise as of yet. But uh, it's going to be a, just a beautiful sunrise this morning. Yesterday, of course, made it up to 67 degrees. That was all... Uh, let's see, do the math, 22 degrees warmer than the previous day's high temperature. Remember, we only stayed at 45 on Tuesday, and that's because we had those cold temperatures in place here, and that was the coldest high temperature in the month of October since all the way back in 1925. Today, we are going to make it up into the upper 60s again, maybe a couple of uh, low 70s off to the south and west with uh, some fairly consistent temperatures. So we'll gain about anywhere 20, maybe 25 degrees across the board. Good indication we've got some fairly dry air out there. Nothing is showing up on satellite radar imagery right now. We don't have to deal with any damp roads nor the damp chill like we had the past couple of mornings. There was all the wintry stuff up there in the panhandle. That has now moved on out as the upper level low gets on out of here. And also the front that moved through is helping to push the leftovers of Hurricane Zeta off to the northeast. So they're getting a big old dose of rain out there and it's going to start to mix in with some colder air up here so it looks like they're in store for a lot of snow up to the northeastern united states with all that cold air that will continue to work its way across we are actually colder right now than cut bank montana at 50 and we're at 45 degrees and like i said nice warm up and very uh, way below normal temperatures by about 10 to 15 degrees and that's going to be the case over the next few days all the afternoon and morning temperatures will be below their respective normals 60 today at noon sunny winds going to start to pick up as well so it is going to be on the breezy side today so even though we make it up to 68 a jacket might not be a bad idea throughout the afternoon especially if you get in the shadows Cold start again tomorrow. Nice warm up. Same thing over the weekend. Couple of extra clouds here and there over the weekend. Uh, beautiful temperatures in the low to mid 70s. And then we get to kind of trim off temperatures a little bit with a weak front that moves through here Monday, Tuesday for voting. If you haven't early voted and going out to the polls on Election Day, looks great. Marcus, you here on Monday? Yes. Okay. All right. Breakfast tacos Monday. Oh, very nice. So you sorry. don't believe me. He's looking at me like, I don't believe you. I do. Can I get that? Our producer's going, I'm not here on Monday. All right. Uh, so definitely you. Monday. Do a Monday. Uh, <laughs> oh, Mark. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Isn't Mark off on Monday? Come. Yeah. <laughs> I'll no, I'll no, be here. No, he's here. I'll be here. And I'll, I'll, I can leave a couple in the fridge. 649, 45 degrees. <laughs> Nothing like a leftover taco. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Hey, take it or leave it, pal. That's right. Season two of the popular Star Wars series, The Mandalorian, premieres tomorrow. And tomorrow on Good Morning San Antonio, we're going to break down a few of the things you need to know before you watch season two. Let me guess, is part of it watching season one? <laughs> I would imagine. <laughs> that's, a good guess. Already. that's a good guess. That's Outside a good guess. with live cam, the news you need to know before you go on this Thursday morning is coming up. Glad you're with us. up here on GMA right behind me one of the many areas damaged by Hurricane Zeta this is a church steeple taken off the top and the damage is pretty extensive we had 101 mile per hour gusts in Gulfport alone some of the storm surge reached over eight feet and now the storm has raced through North Georgia even 800,000 customers without power there Western South Carolina North Carolina are next and I'll have that forecast plus Rob is in New Orleans with what happened there you'll want to see it all coming up right here on GMA. A man here on the north side is recovering from what he thought was an early morning carjacking. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Police say it turns out it was an assault. It happened here in the 9500 block of San Pedro Avenue. That's the man's truck back here uh, being checked out by crime scene investigators looking for fingerprints. Now they say that the man called police around 530 this morning saying that he had been carjacked. 
he apparently was dragged out of his truck and then hit in his head by two other men. The victim took off running to another location. That's where he called police, thinking that those attackers had taken off in his truck. Officers searched the area. They did find the pickup. The men who attacked him, though, they were long gone. Police searched the area with the helicopter, but they did not find him. They're trying to put together the pieces of exactly what happened and what may have prompted this assault. But again, police saying this was not a carjacking after all. Reporting from the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Coming up today on GMS 8 and I, the Day of the Dead Virtual River Parade is airing tomorrow night right here on KSAT and will feature vibrant and joyful spirits floating along the most iconic waters of San Antonio. But exactly how was this parade planned and executed during a pandemic? Our Alicia Barrera visits the Riverwalk Marina for a glimpse of what we can expect at 9 after Good Morning America. If you have to head out the door in the next five minutes, let's get a glimpse of what traffic is like. Here is Officer Trujillo. And the only uh, sticking point that we have is over here, Highway 151 410 area. So the southbound 410 access road exiting for westbound of Highway 151 on the access road. That's where we have those uh, two vehicles involved in that accident. So it looks like it's going to be here for just a little while longer. Mike. Thank you, sir, and sun doesn't officially come up for about another 50 minutes, but we're already starting to see the beautiful glow, that very faint glow right there along the horizon. Oh, that's pretty. 44 now here in town and 40 over there in Hondo, 52 up the road in Canyon Lake. Throughout the rest of today, plenty of sunshine. Wind is going to be picking up later on today. 60 at noon, 68 for a high temperature. So, yeah, jacket's still a pretty good idea, especially if you get in the, uh, the shadows and it'll cool off quickly tonight. More of the same tomorrow. We make it up into the low 70s by the weekend. A couple of extra clouds here and there. Just sensational for trick-or-treating on Saturday. Turn back your clocks. We've got the blue moon on Saturday evening and Tuesday. Good weather for voting. Good news and for all the kids with the plans on Halloween. That's right. Yeah. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a great day, and we'll see you back here at 9.